Hey. hey everybody it's your boy how are you guys doing today uh today we are going to be playing some portal 2 we're going to be playing portal 2 um with the developer commentary turned on uh is this seriously your first time looking at the portal 2 developer commentary no 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 but it is the first time i have looked at the developer commentary of any of valve's games uh, on a live stream, because you see, there's going to be a developer commentary mode released for uh, Half-Life Alex before the end of the year. It could even be this coming Thursday. Uh, so, um, I was recommended on the Discord server, exclamation point Discord, uh, in the chat to be able to join, to uh, possibly play through Valve's past... Uh, you know, uh, uh, developer commentary modes and maybe add some of my own uh my own commentary because i've specifically with portal 2 been working on a uh, documentary series oh god for four years uh so let's get started with that i'm launching port <laughs> okay well Jesus Christ. Um. All right. So we got Portal 2 opened right here. Uh, let's just check our settings real quick. Let's triple buffer the vertical sync just for the fuck of it. And yeah. Is the Half-Life Alex update only going to include the developer commentary? It's the only thing that we're aware of. Um, I, it's, it's, it's a hope of mine that it includes more than that uh, because, well, there's, there's a lot more that, that Half-Life Alex really requires. But what are you gonna do? Is SV Cheats one on? Um, no, but it doesn't, like they automatically turn that on. All right, so there's all this co-op um, developer commentary stuff here. I'm not gonna do that uh, right now. We're gonna just play Portal 2 single player and do the uh, the developer commentary from that. I don't think we've played much of, of Portal 2 single player on live streams. Uh, my, my relationship in history of Portal 2 is quite strange. It, I might make a video on it sometime. You have been in suspension for days in compliance with state and federal regulations no this is not new developer commentary hold on <clears throat> all right do i know about portal 2 community edition yes i do yes i do do you know about it? Nice. Yo, 13 months. Thank you very much. Good morning. You have been in suspension for 58 days. In compliance with state and federal regulations, all testing candidates in the Aperture Science Extended Relaxation Center. Hi, my name is Gabe Newell, and welcome to Portal 2. Hey. When we released the original Portal in nice. 2007, nice. it was an experiment to see Eight how months. gamers would respond to a different kind. Hold on. of gameplay and storytelling experience. Portal went on to win a bunch of awards, sell many copies, and most importantly, resonate with gamers in a way that no other Valve title has. I don't know the about that. The challenges for us in building Portal 2 were to live up to people's expectations, to take you back to the world of Chell and Aperture Science, and to surprise gamers again, not with more of the same, but with more of the new. And I think it will be, mostly, a pleasant surprise to listen to it so gabe is very um open about the fact at least he was for a very long time that um that the portal 2 was his favorite game that valve had shipped up until this point um so it's interesting to hear but it'll be interesting to hear what he has to say about all of this 
The idea of being stuck forever in a state of stasis that looked like a crappy old motel room had been in our minds for a long time. From F-Stop days. We weren't days. sure exactly how we wanted to rip you out of it. There was some debate over whether the opening sequence happened inside the player's head or not. There was an alternate opening where Aperture had hooked up all of its cryo-stored test subjects to an incredibly boring hotel room simulator, which Wheatley would then wake the player from. Eventually, this was discarded as too difficult to explain in the short time allotted, and mm. we opted to change the hotel room to a container ride on a rail. This allowed us to show the player, rather than tell them about how they and other test subjects have been stored, show some of the scale of the facility, and even hint at how much time has passed. Mm. We also get to gradually reveal all of this through the destruction of the container itself as it moves what? and bangs into you, things. My dad owes me $20 because Biden won. Let's fucking go. Overall, this gives the player a much more dynamic and visceral introduction to Portal 2. So, um, I don't know how much they're going to talk about it because it has been a very long time since, um, you will hear a buzz. since I've played Portal 2's developer commentary. Good. This completes the gymnastic portion of your mandatory... Uh, I don't know how much of F-Stop they're going to talk about, but F-Stop was the thing, The writers you know. went back and forth over whether or not Wheatley had tried escaping with other test subjects before waking the player up. It was an interesting idea, and you can still hear remnants of the story arc in some of the dialogue. But at the end of the day, it was just too expansive a concept to sell. So it's hinted at, but not overtly mentioned until the end. This is art. You will hear a buzzer. When you hear the buzzer, stare at the art. Stare at the art, guys. Stare at it. You should now feel mentally reinvigorated. I do. I suspect staring at art has not provided the required intellectual sustenance. Reflect, Reflect briefly on this classical music. Good. Now, please return to your bed. There you go. Good morning. You have been in suspension for nine, 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 nine. Hello? Anyone in there? Hello? Ah. Ah. Oh, God. You look... Um, good. good. Looking good, actually. Are Drink you okay? water. How are you? Don't answer that. I'm absolutely sure you're fine. There's plenty of time for you to recover. Just take it. Please prepare for emergency evacuation. Stay calm. Stay, stay calm. Prepare. It's all the same. Prepare. It's all fine. All right? Don't move. I'm going to get us out of here. Oh, you might want to hang on to something. Word of advice. Up to you. Test subjects do experience some uh, cognitive deterioration mm. after a few months in suspension. Yeah. Now you've been under for quite a lot longer. Yeah. And it's not out of the question that you might have a very minor case of serious brain damage. But don't be alarmed, all right? Uh, although if you do, if you do feel alarmed, try to hold on to that feeling because that is the proper reaction to being told that you've got. Nice. Yeah. Still Just such a great say, intro. Yeah. Told, does any of this Thank you. Make any sense? Just tell me. Just say yes. Okay, what you're doing there is jumping. Uh, you just you just jumped. But never mind. Say apple. Apple. Okay, you know what? That's close enough. Just hold tight. All reactor core safeguards are now non-functional. Please prepare for reactor core meltdown. Okay, look, I wasn't going to mention this to you, but I'm in pretty hot water here. How are you doing down there? You still holding on? The reserve power ran out. So, of course, the whole relaxation center stops waking up the bloody test subjects. Hold on, this is a bit tricky. And, of course, nobody tells me anything. No, why should you tell me anything? Why should I be kept informed, you know, about the life functions of the 10,000 bloody test subjects I'm supposed to be in charge of? Why? It's close. Can you see? Am I going to make it through? Have I got enough space? Uh, just, just got to get through here. Okay, I just got to concentrate. And whose fault do you think it's going to be when the management comes down here and finds 10,000 flipping vegetables? All right, so now I hit that one. I hit that one. Okay, 
listen, we should get our story straight, all right? If anyone asks, and no one's going to ask, don't worry, but if anyone asks, tell them as far as you know, the last time you checked, everyone looked pretty much alive, all right? Not dead. Okay, almost there. On the other side of that wall is one of the old testing tracks. There's a piece of equipment in there that we're going to need to get out of here. I, I think this is a docking station. Get ready. Good news, that is not a docking station. So there's one mystery solved. Uh, I'm going to attempt a manual override on this wall. Could get a bit technical. Hold on. Almost there. Remember, you're looking for a gun that makes holes, not bullet holes. But don't worry, you'll figure it out. Seriously, do hold on this time. There we go. Now, I'll be honest, you are probably in no fit state to run this particular type of cognitive gauntlet. But, um... At least you're a good jumper, so you got that, got the jumping on your side. Um, just do your best, and I'll meet you up ahead. The container ride destruction sequence provided some unique technical challenges. The dynamics you experience are actually computed as two separate but nested simulations. The first is a core scale simulation designed as a stress element analysis pass. <coughs> This pass computes the overall gross motion of the container itself and computes the collisions and breakpoints based on path keyframe data and a network of constraints. As the container bumps and crashes along, the constraints start breaking and the room progressively starts to come apart. There are over 300 rigid bodies and 900 constraints in this rig, all individually configured for properties like tensile, friction and collision response. The core simulation portrayed gross motion that captured the main dynamics of the ride, but not the fine details. The product of the core simulation was then used to deform spline-based surfaces representing the container geometry, which in turn were parents to fine debris anchored as rigid bodies. As the surface deformations increase, anchors are broken and the fine debris rigid bodies are released into the simulation. The fine simulation also includes the interior furniture and the model detailing. The two simulations were then connected using cache data and were driven together by a series of scripts. Due to the computational complexities of having two nested simulations, we had to come up with some solutions to some interesting mathematical problems. One problem was that the nested nature of the simulations resulted in some instability in the fine debris calculations due to floating point computational limits. The solution employed for this was to compute the fine debris on a stage where the root transform of the course simulation was essentially cancelled out and stored for later use. This allowed us to more accurately detect the fine interactions between the debris and the environment. Post simulation, the root transform position and inertia were reapplied to the details. We solved the problem of trying to compute the player within this highly dynamic environment by putting them in a virtual room that has all the base shapes of the rendered container, but is simply used to compute player navigation. It's hidden somewhere else in the map. The viewpoint of the player is then parented to the course simulation transform, resulting in the final rendered frame. At the end of the ride, the player is teleported into the actual game space. The simulations were iterative, enabling us to sculpt the dynamics in parallel with gameplay design. In the final product there are over 1200 rigid bodies, 900 constraints and 1000 joints. With all the iterations combined, the actual runtime spent computing the simulation was 92.4875 days. Um, to put that into perspective, uh, tech, tech stuff. And again, welcome to the Aperture Science Enrichment Center. We are currently experiencing technical difficulties due to circumstances nice. of potentially apocalyptic significance beyond our control. Tech, tech However, stuff. Thanks to emergency testing protocols, testing can continue. These pre-recorded messages will provide instructional and motivational support so that science can still be done, even in the event of environmental, social, economic, or structural collapse. The portal will open, and emergency testing will begin in three. Two, one. This is Portal 2, everybody. Cube and button-based testing remains an important tool for science, even in a dire emergency. If cube and button-based testing caused this emergency, don't worry. The odds of this happening twice are very slim.
Don't you like, uh, you see, the, the explanation of, of all of the pre-baked simulations that had to go into the introduction is great, but I don't care. Lie on your back. And are pry immediate te to your temples. You are simply experiencing a rare reaction in which the material emancipation grill may have emancipated the- This room is meant to teach players the fundamentals of portals connecting them to two places in the world. As the blue portal moves around the world, the orange stays rooted. In the original portal, this room had these portals moving by themselves on a timer. This led to most people simply staring through their orange portal, waiting for the blue one to end up in the right place. We felt that altering this to make the players decide where the portals came out was more instructive, and meant that players who already knew how to use portals could solve this puzzle both quickly and with authority. Why don't I care? Please take a moment to write down the results of your test. An aperture science reintegration associate. But it just it ties into my opinions of Portal 2. I think Portal 2 has some of the strongest comedic writing Valve has ever produced. But I also think Portal 2 is also Valve's most indulgent game. Like there's a lot of uh, like, extra stuff. Don't you know what I mean? <clears throat> In listening to reason. Hey, you made it! There should be a, a portal device on that podium over there. Random valve fact. I can't see it though. Wheatley was one of eight cores that were developed for Portal 2 after the F-Stop project got cancelled. We thought of making a whole new character for Portal 2, but we didn't want to lose the relationship between Gladys and Chill that began in Portal 1. Once we decided to stay with Chill, we wanted to improve her look, updating her leg springs and jumpsuit to have a more functional design. At the same time, we didn't want players to not recognize her, so we kept a lot of the iconic elements like the color orange. She has folded down her jumpsuit to show she has essentially rolled up her sleeves and shed some of the aperture label. She is awake again to test, but stronger and more determined than ever. That's Realm Lovejoy, one of the original hires from DigiPen, the Nuclear Monkey software team that worked on um, Nobecular Drop. She left shortly after Portal 2. Some emergency testing may require prolonged interaction with lethal military androids. Rest assured that to all share. military androids have been taught to read and provided with one copy of the laws of robotics. To yeah. share. Good. If you feel that a lethal military android has not respected your rights as detailed in the laws of robotics, please note it on your self-reporting form. Is this the first time you've done this on stream? Yes. Associate will initiate the appropriate grievance filing paperwork. I've never played the Portal Lego Dimension stuff. Ever. I've never played it. This next test is very dangerous to help you remain tranquil in the face of almost certain death. This map was one of the first of the older portal maps that we beat up and decayed to bind the two games together. The smooth jazz joke is probably the oldest one in the game. The team discovered through playtesting that smooth jazz was funny to all ages, <laughs> genders, and cultures. That's Mike Moraski. Talking about the smooth jazz joke, Mike Moraski being the, the composer of this game. Starting out in the ruins of the test chambers from the first portal was our goal pretty much from day one. We wanted to give players a sense of nostalgia for what they had played, but also make it very clear that things had changed. Not only in a fictional sense, but in a graphical one as well. We needed to bridge the gap between the first game's simpler art assets and the much more complex look of Portal 2. Who did all the art for the Ratman Dens in Portal 2? I know it's just one person, but I always forget who it is. I know nothing about the... Portal 1 has a commentary mode, yeah. I, have, I know absolutely nothing about the LEGO Dimensions Portal game. 
If the enrichment center is currently being bombarded with fireballs, meteorites, or other objects from space, please avoid unsheltered testing areas wherever a lack of shelter from space debris does not appear to be a deliberate part of the test. Yeah, duh. How do you feel about the word rancid? I don't know. Game's chugging, that's weird. <laughs> the word rancid makes you moist. Center remind you that although circumstances may appear bleak, you are not alone. All aperture science personality constructs being moist is rancid. I agree. Low power environments of as few as 1.1 volts. As few as 1.1 volts. Yeah, Portal 2 was the game that got me introduced into the idea of being um, Valve News Network. It taught me how to look for information. The principles of momentum to movement through portals. Hey, Tyler. Hey. No longer apply in the future. God, God help, help you. you. Not a lot of, uh, dev commentary nodes. around ah fart i might have portal funneling turned off because i hate it if you are a non-employee much of the fun in portal is based on the joy of the aha eric tam something new and remember the game needs a very specific pacing to ensure these moments if things are too easy this is a teleportation room it feels like you didn't accomplish anything if it's too hard then players feel stupid instead of smart when they finally realized that one small part of the puzzle that they were missing. This room teleports you through the world. Unfortunately, trying to create that delicate balance leads to a lot of shuffling of levels right here. and a lot of revisions and tweaks to existing levels. When we started the project, making any big structural change in a level or the order of levels would lead to hours or even days of busy work, trying to reconnect things and make sure they lined up again. If we ever wanted to ship something the size of Portal, with the finely tuned balance we desired, then we needed a way to be able to make the big changes to the layout of the game without paying the cost of making everything line up again. We needed a way to bend space. We needed to think with portals. Using portals to connect different areas in the world, we could make any type of impossible space work out. You could look through a hallway into the next room, but the hallway might be on the other side of the map, and the room you were looking into might be in a completely different orientation. Yep. We could seamlessly insert an elevator, a huge expansive vista, a room that was bigger on the inside than the outside, or even create an infinite fall by connecting a shaft back into itself. Soon every connection between any space was a portal. We could even switch them on the fly. Even a simple door worked like the cartoons, just a facade painted on a wall that seamlessly opened somewhere else entirely. Once the game settled down, we were able to finalize our path and remove all the world portals. Except this one. There's only one impossible one. space left in the whole game. See if we can figure out where it is. It's this one. This hallway is a seamless world portal. This hallway right here is a world portal. By the way, Eric Tams, the person just talking in that dev commentary, is the person leading the Artifact 2.0 project. the turret trap Wheatley tries to do. Good work getting this far, future starter. That said, that hallway was oh, whatever. Or irradiated in such a way that the future should not start with you. Please return to your turret trap. Oh yeah. 
at the end of the game. Yeah, that is true. I forgot. I don't play Portal 2 that often. To ensure that sufficient power remains for core testing protocols, all safety devices have been disabled. The Enrichment Center respects your right to have questions or concerns about... This interaction with Wheatley was the first that we hooked up for our initial showing at E3. It demonstrated how Wheatley would be an actor in the world, and how the player would not only be interacting with him directly, but also using him to interact with the Aperture facility. Yep. And he had a different voice actor that was just a developer that everybody liked better. The Wheatley model was designed as a mechanical version of the original Portal 1 personality sphere. They told me... Originally, they filled a very similar role to that in Portal 1, so we needed one base model which could hold a lot of different expressions. Yeah. Experimenting with different rigging ideas, we came up with the onion skin design, where a number of spherical plates could slide around inside each other, all supported on a small motion platform mounted on a gyroscope. This and it works! No matter what expression Wheatley was pulling, he always retained his spherical shape. The modelers and the animators collaborated closely on these early tests to make sure the design supported the range of expression needed to satisfy any personality sphere that got designed. <sighs> Lots of ideas were thrown out, such as a small internal robot arm that Wheatley could pull out of one of his ports and pull himself around with. Yep. We were careful to make the mechanics look plausible, but we had to cheat the eyelids, since they ended up being a physical impossibility. There was no way all that geometry could fit into the space around his eye without clipping out the other side. But they were such an essential feature of the model that we resorted to crushing them up inside the eye where the player can't see them. I love that they shut him off, but um, the, it still works. He, his animations still go. Seriously, I'm not, I'm not joking. Can you just turn around for a second? All right, you can turn around now. Bam! Secret panel. You didn't catch him. You can't catch him. How do you make a giant mechanical eyeball express life and emotion? This person worked with... give the impression with... that he's talking when he has no map. All right, all right, all right. Prell here, Mrs. Prell, uh, is a puppeteer of, like, a long-time puppeteer that worked under Jim Henson in the 80s. She's fucking awesome. The animator's understanding of human behavior came in handy for bringing Wheatley the personality sphere to life. Talking is so much more than just moving a character's mouth. You have to use body language, head attitudes, and rhythm of movement and eye focus to indicate a character's feelings and motivations. Slow, smooth head moves, a steady gaze, and a relaxed eye aperture indicate that she does still work calm. at Valve. She worked on Half-Life Alex. Sharp yes. Head turns, rapid blinks, and glancing around indicate nervousness or deceit. Add a tightly constricted eye aperture and a little shiver to show fear. Tilting the body away while keeping the eye focused on the player signals an attempt at cleverness that ultimately only fools Wheatley himself. Suspicion is communicated by squinting his eyelids and handles, which function as very expressive eyebrows and cheeks. It's also fun to remind the player that Wheatley is a machine. When hacking, his eye and body segments become perfectly centered and spin mechanically, inspired by the spinning tape reels on old Univac computers. And when he wants to look far in front, he flips his eye all the way over to the other side of his head. This animation approach, combined with the writing and vocals, makes Wheatley quite a unique and entertaining character. Part human, part machine, all eye, and no brain. So, um, it's effectively her that caused... You know how, like, GLaDOS and Portal 2 is a completely different design? But we just kind of accept it because it's a much it's a superior design because her head allows her to emote it's all her the fact that glados and wheatley all the personality cores in portal 2 legitimately can't emote at all is because of karen prowl karen prowl is is the unsung hero of portal 2 single player by far and my and co-op and co-op she was she yeah she what she is a puppeteer by trade that worked under Jim Henson and the Muppet the Muppet uh, stuff in the 70s and 80s. You know that dinosaur show from the 90s? I know she worked on that. Uh, she worked on Fraggle Rock. There's a there's an amazing uh, presentation that she did that not a whole lot of people know about, where she talks about the design of Glados and stuff. She, it's an amazing presentation. I should put that up on the Discord. Okay, I'm gonna leave my cards on the table. I don't want to do it. I don't want to go in there. Don't, don't go in there. Don't, she, she's off. She's, she's off. off. She's, she's off. off. She's, she's off. off. She's off. 
Originally, Gladys was built to curl up and disguise herself as one of her rings, mm -hmm. potentially explaining how she had survived the explosion at the end of Portal 1. But this wasn't a very dramatic reveal, so we threw it out in favor of spreading her out over a greater distance. This also made her more recognizable as GLaDOS when you initially crossed the room. The actual wake-up animation was a combination of simulated animation with a layer of hand-keyed animation over the top. A two-stage model was created for this scene. The first stage had separate pieces and connecting cables that would be drawn together by running a physics simulation so that the pieces would interact with the environment. Physics simulations were also used to break apart the objects GLaDOS crashed into while she rides around. At the point where GLaDOS rises free of contact with the ground, she switches instantaneously to a fully connected model with controls for hand keyed animation. From this point, the animator enhanced GLaDOS's awakening by hand, choreographing the violent chaos of her re-emerging consciousness while at the same time conveying the weight of a machine the size of an airliner. Once the hand keyed animation was done, a final simulation pass was run to animate the cables and dangling parts of GLaDOS's body. The scene was produced very rapidly for an E3 deadline, mm. and the traditional rig for the sequence was never fully realized. This made it difficult when we extended the sequence after E3 to add further animation, but we accomplished it by bearing in mind that Gladys herself is pretty broken at this point. The last part of the sequence requires the player to lose control of their view while being immobilized by a giant mechanical pincher. Mm. Once the controlled camera takes over, a careful alignment and time synchronization was required to make all the hand animated models and camera interact with each other. Each of the stages in this wake up scene contain a variety of processes that are very, very challenging to achieve live in a game engine. My history with the E3 presentation from 2010, I don't think there's a there is a game presentation anyone? from anything yeah, that I've seen as many uh, times as I watched the Portal 2. The, 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 the only yeah, everything since the Lost Coast. Half Life Two doesn't have dev commentary. Gold, gold, quoting gold. My favorite line of the game right there. Ominous, but probably fine as long as it doesn't start you know moving up. No. Escape pod, escape pod. It's, it's moving up. Okay. Okay, no, don't, don't worry, don't worry. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. This should slow it down. No, it makes it go faster. Uh oh. Power up initiated. Okay, don't panic. All right, stop panicking. Uh, I can I can still stop this. Um, uh, oh, there's a, there's a password. Okay, it's fine. I'll just. I'll just All right, this takes a minute. I'm gonna get water. A, 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 um, A. A A A A A C. Wait, did I do B? Did I start writing these down? Power up, complete. I don't. Okay, okay, okay. Listen. All right, new plan. Act natural. Act natural. Nothing wrong. Hello. Oh, it's you. You know her? It's been a long time. How have you been? I've been really busy. I had no idea that if I turned around during this scene, a wall popped up. I never knew that. If you turn around, a wall pops up. Noah, I had zero clue. I just learned that just now. I will say, though, that since you went to all the trouble of waking me up, you must really, really love to test. I love it, too. There's just one small thing we need to take care of first. In case of implosion, look at implosion. Why, why is that there? Probably to hide some animation bullshit. The development of Portal 2 has the least number of leaks, especially in terms of assets and maps and things. There. Good. You have the dual portal device. There should be a way back to the testing area up ahead. Once testing starts, I'm This is Chamber 19. Interaction with you to a minimum. Luckily, we haven't started testing yet. 
This will be our only chance to talk. Do you know the biggest lesson I learned from what you did? I discovered I have a sort of black box quick save feature. In the event of a catastrophic failure, the last two minutes of my life are preserved for analysis. I was able, well, forced really See, it's chamber 19. Killing me again and again, forever. You know, if you'd done that to somebody else, they might devote their existence. When the player first encounters the robot arms, we wanted to convey that they were still coming back online. The idea was that GLaDOS was just waking up and hadn't yet fully regained control of them. Slowly over the course of the first few levels of this act, she gets more sure of herself and her ability to alter and mess with the lab increases. The arms presented a number of challenges, the key one being the interaction with the player. It was easy for the player to get stuck behind or inside of the models if they did something too complex. So we had to limit most of the arm action to the walls or ceilings of the test chambers and we restricted their use on a larger scale to areas where we could be sure of the player's location. From the outside, it seems like such a clean and straightforward development cycle once they nailed down the concept. Absolutely not. Sorry about the mess. I've really let the place go since you killed GLaDOS originally was a lot more cutting in these opening rooms. Given that she's talking to someone she perceives as her murderer, playtests revealed, though, that it was a bit grueling getting browbeaten by GLaDOS this early in the game, so her arc was rewritten to give her more of a slow burn towards the player. Deadly lasers. Not bad. I forgot how good you are at this. You should pace yourself, though. We have a lot of tests to do. <sighs> Portal 1 pistons still exist in that Chamber 19 and even in co-op courses 1 and 2. This next test involves discouragement redirection cubes. I just finished building them before you had your... Episode. episode. So now we'll both get to see how they work. There should be one in the corner. If you're fast enough, you can grab Wheatley here. I'm sure we all know that. Well done. Here come the test results. You are a horrible person. That's what it says. A horrible person. We weren't even testing for that. I remember the first time I played this game. That was a great day. April 2011, I was like 14. It's just a data point. If it makes you feel any better, science has now validated your birth mother's decision to abandon you on a doorstep. Congratulations, not on the test. Most people emerge from suspension terribly undernourished. I want to congratulate you on beating the odds and somehow managing to pack, pack on, on a few pounds. pounds. Yeah, there are a fuck ton of loading screens in this game. Thank the Xbox for that. One moment. Navigating these test chambers faster than I can build them, so feel free to slow down and do whatever it is you do when you're not destroying this facility. By the way, that portal does not always line up. That's some trickery right there. Give you credit. I guess you are listening to me. But for the record, you don't have to go that slowly.
The way they change levels in Portal 2 internally is actually awful compared to other Source games. How so? This next test involves the first this was chamber. The first test map that we created when we started to experiment with the aerial faith plate puzzle element. The map underwent many visual refinements, but it's one of the few puzzles that remained almost completely unchanged from its first form. Yep. If I played Death Stranding, no. An interesting fact: you're not breathing real air. It's too expensive to pump this far down. We just take carbon dioxide out of a room, freshen it up a little, and pump it back in. Isn't the low so poly cubes in the elevator so shaft based on the beta design? The, the low poly cubes. What do you mean by that? The level after you drop into old aperture, but before the vault door used to be two separate maps until Valve realized Xbox could handle them. Well, have fun soaring through the air without a care in the world. I have to go to the wing that was made entirely of glass and pick up 15 eggs. The catapult trajectory lines seen here allow us to visualize where the catapult will deliver a player or a physics object. We can differentiate the speed and trajectory vector, 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 vector players and other objects. The yellow lines are for physics objects and green is the player's trajectory. Sometimes we need to have a different value to accommodate oh. the shape of the object being catapulted. I did it wrong. What works for the player may not work for an object, and vice and versa. And we're for instance, alive. it was common for a box okay. to make it to a ledge while the player would smack into the side. Hold on. And then fall. Down into the slime. The visualization tools helped us debug these types of problems. All right, let's listen to that again. The lines seen here allow us to visualize where the catapult will deliver a player or a physics object. We can differentiate the speed and trajectory for players and other objects. The yellow lines are for physics objects, and green is the player's trajectory. Sometimes we need to have a different value to accommodate the shape of the object being catapulted. What works for the player may not work for an object, and vice versa. For instance, it was common for a box to make it to a ledge while the player would smack into the side and then fall down into the slime. The visualization tools helped us debug these types of problems. That was weird. They call it slime? It, no, not everybody calls it slime. Some people call it slime. My favorite speedrunner's trick of the whole damn game. Oh, sorry. I'm still cleaning out the test chambers, so sometimes there's still trash in them. Standing around, smelling and being useless. Try to avoid the garbage hurtling towards you. Wait, did it not work? It didn't work that time, okay. The low poly weighted storage cube is based on the beta design. I had no idea. Remember before when I was talking about smelly garbage standing around being useless? That was a metaphor. I was actually Some people call it slime, you. some people call it goo. You didn't it's up to the person. Time, so I was worried it sailed right over your head, which would have made this apology seem insane. That's why I had to call you garbage a second time just now. I get it, GLaDOS, don't worry about it. I am garbage. I am a being full of anxiety and dread. Did you know that people with some people call it cello. I love that joke too. That's a good joke. I'm sorry. I don't know why that went off. Anyway, just an interest. Oh, did I accidentally fizzle that before you? <sighs> so much fucking waiting in this game. Go ahead and grab another one. So much waiting in this game. Oh no, I fizzled that one too. Oh well, we have warehouses full of the things. Absolutely worthless. I'm happy to get rid of them. Hey, we. It's only a problem if you play often. So then maybe it makes sense why I don't really like this game. 
Whereas Portal 1 is replayable as hell. Portal 2, oof. You've got to really put some, make some time for it. Every test chamber is equipped with an emancipation grill at its exit, so that test subjects cannot smuggle test objects out of the test area. This, this one is broken. broken. Don't, Don't take, anything take anything with you. You can't make me do nothing. I think that one was about to say, I love you. They are sentient, of course. We just have a lot of them. <sighs> How linear puzzle games can be replayable? Portal Run is so much fun to just replay over and over again. This next we needed a puzzle that would demonstrate the different effects that the Fizzler has on the game. This map was consistently the one that most of our playtesters would get stuck on, and we tried various things to make the puzzle easier to understand. Originally, this room had two Fizzlers in it, and was divided up into three distinct areas. This proved to be too complicated and almost none of our playtesters could solve the puzzle. We removed the second fizzler and simplified the layout of the room quite a bit, but most of our playtesters were still getting stuck on it. We identified the problem to be the space above the fizzler. Originally the space was completely open, but that didn't effectively convey to the players that they needed to shoot a portal above the fizzler. We then tried putting glass with several holes in it above the fizzler. This was slightly more effective as players would know that the holes are there for a purpose and would try to solve the puzzle by shooting portals through the holes. The <laughs> map was still not testing well though, yeah. as players could not figure out which side of the fizzler they needed to be on when they shot their portals. We then changed it to have only a single hole through the glass, moved down to the eye level of the player, so that shooting the portal from either side of the fizzler would be a valid solution. This change tested really well and we started seeing most of our playtesters make it through the level without getting stuck on it for a long time. So the guy talking here to Jeev is uh, one of the hires from Tag the Power of Paint. He's also the guy that made both the piano and the whiteboard markers in Half-Life Alex. We originally planned to use the same emancipation grid effect we'd used in Portal 1. We were surprised to hear during <laughs> several of our early playtests that players thought this map was the first time they'd encountered one. Players walk through at least one emancipation grid in almost every map. Playtesters also weren't able to report the grid's properties. That indicated to us that we needed to better communicate when an interaction was occurring. Our challenge was to create an effect that was more noticeable to players, but didn't look so solid or so threatening that players wouldn't attempt to walk through it. We chose to keep the cool color scheme and reinforce the non-threatening nature of the field by mimicking the kind of water caustics you'd find in a shallow swimming pool. And they to just straight up reused it in Half-Life Alex. We added flashes whenever the player shoots one. To warn players that the grid will destroy objects brought through it, we added a vortex effect that increases in intensity as objects get near. Once these changes went in, playtest feedback demonstrated that players noticed the emancipation grids earlier and had a much better understanding of their function. I appreciate that Valve playtests as much as they do. But maybe don't just just don't where is it reused in half-life alex the combine fields the the force fields the combine force fields that you can move your hands through and it goes blah, 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 blah. would you say half-life alex is more replayable than portal 2 hell yeah I never understood what the hell the point of this was. Wheatley was originally envisioned as a group of spheres that you discover as you explore the facility behind the scenes. We ditched this idea for two reasons. For one thing, behind the scenes levels were required to highlight the introductions of these new spheres and these levels have their own unique logic. The number of spheres we wanted would have made for, made for, made for far too many of these types of levels, resulting in a very unportal-like game. Also, we were spending so much time introducing these new characters that so we had no time to get to know any of them before they were swept off stage for the next one. Eventually we realized it would be a lot more satisfying to really get to know one sphere instead of briefly meeting six. 
Some of these characters were eventually recycled as corrupt cores for the finale. Yep, and then you've got the Morgan Freeman Sphere. Wheatley, Morgan Freeman Sphere, Space Sphere, Adventure Sphere, Fact Sphere, and... Uh... I don't know the... Th does any... It, has the last one ever been... The defense sphere, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> oh, the paranoid sphere. That's right. That's the six. Yep. Sailing Lubier majestically like an eagle piloting a blimp. So much fat and orphan shaming in this game. Do Portal 1 rocket turrets count as spheres? Uh, I think it's the same design language. So maybe. Was there a paranoid sphere in a Portal Source Filmmaker video? Uh, there is footage of the paranoid sphere. Yeah, that that is out there somewhere. Enjoy this next test. I'm going to go to the surface. It's a beautiful day out. Yesterday I saw a deer. If you solve this next the test... The Faith Play was originally a robot arm model which we hurriedly placed into the maps to see if the gameplay was fun. Mm. Over time it became apparent that playtesters were struggling to tell the Faith Play apart from the standard arm, so we replaced it with a new design. It was meant to be a simple heavy weight which was flung upwards, propelling the player. <laughs> The length is meant to imply a direction, so the player knows the intended flight path before they step onto it. We experimented with footmarks and tread plates on the design, but it quickly became confusingly busy, so we kept the design simple. I am at approximately alcohol at the moment, and I just wanted to... I am approximately alcohol at the moment, and just wanted to say I love your work. Thank you. Um... Yeah, 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 so... You can see the original design of the Faith Plate in the E3 demo. It was then recreated by like a bunch of fucking modders back in the day. GLaDOS was being more insulting than menacing. Well, they explained that earlier. They did that because she was originally incredibly menacing in their writing, in her writing, and playtesters didn't like that shit. Honestly, if I were to pick a game to have more leaks related to it, it's gotta be Portal 2. I know a lot about Portal 2's, like, dev archive repository, and it's a fucking nightmare mess. It's like, Jesus, it's like eight par- it's like four two terabyte parts of content that, like, from what I've heard is just, like, an absolute insane mess. And it's the only repository that Valve won't share. Because it's just, you know... It's just way too un disorganized, and there's way too many projects in it. Because you've also got all the science fair stuff in there. I didn't see the deer today. I did see some humans, but with you here, I've got more test subjects. The original design is used in the part where he kills you. That's true. Milkmaster redeemed twenty five thousand. Do you have any information uh, on the release of Citadel, where it's at in development? Release of Citadel. We're likely going to hear about it by next year. Where it's at in development and only very recently uh, got picked back up for development. It's been fits and starts because of COVID, These but it's in development. An F stop, yeah. If you rubbed your cheek on one, it would be like standing outside. It would also sun set sun your hair on fire. It would also set your hair on fire. So, so don't, don't actually, actually do it. Oh, wait, I didn't push the button. Hold on. Only. <laughs> what is the science fair stuff that you mentioned? Um, it's a lot of different projects. It's Time, Margarita, Two Bots, One Wrench, F-Stop, and a few other ones that Valve, even today, has been tight-lipped about. 
Wait, what about F-Stop? What? F-Stop is the original version of Portal 2. I have a video on it coming out soon. Not the full documentary, but a video about F-Stop. Yoink. Do you notice that the places that solve the puzzles are clean panels? It sounded like you said Citadel and F-Stop were in development. Oh, no. F-Stop is not in development. Sorry. Excellent. Citadel is, though. You're a predator, and these tests are your prey. Speaking of which, I was researching sharks for an upcoming test. Do you know who else murders people who are only trying to help them? Did you guess sharks? Because that's wrong. The correct answer is nobody. Nobody but you is that pointlessly cruel. Did you guess sharks? Because the correct answer is nobody. Damn, Portal 2 ain't development. Wide oh, turret. I figured out what to do with all the money I saved recycling your one room full of air. When you die, I'm going to laminate your skeleton and pose you in the lobby. That way, I think this is the darkest joke in the game. How not to have your unfortunate bone structure. Oh, so much <laughs> waiting. Malfunctioning. I guess somebody's going to have to repair that too. No. Any news on Star Fox? None. I'll be right back. Don't touch anything. I sure do like waiting. Hey, 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 up hey, up here. Bird eggs up here. Just shut it right down. This was five dollars. Five dollars. Okay, that's probably the bird egg that they got. Livid. Whoa. The point is, we're gonna break out of here. Puh, puh, puh. Penis. Promise penis party. It's the promised penis party. Remember, you never saw me. Never saw me. If you piss me off, I will laminate your teeth. Yeah, that is why they made the speedrun mod, but we're doing Devcom today. Favorite line in any portal game? I'm speaking in an accent that's beyond her range of hearing. That was my text notification sound for like five years. <laughs> well done. In fact, you did so well. I'm going to note this. I'm not fun. done with I'm not gonna say I'm done with any channel, no. I have a couple Bethesda News Network ideas. Enough. Originally, when I heard the did well enough joke, I thought she was talking about, like, did well was enough to write. Because I was, like, four when I played this game for the first time. This next test involves turrets. You remember them, right? They're the pale spherical things that are full of... Project Lil is our code <gasps> name for an internal push to make our comments more accessible to the whole Valve community. It was pointed out to us in mail from a fan that in some of our previous commentary, the designers referred unfailingly to the gamer as a he. Although in natural speech, most of us normally tend to say they and their, rather than he and his, some stuffy, overactive minion of the grammar police went through and revised all those usages to make them conform to an oppressive gender-biased rule. However, research shows that they and their is a perfectly acceptable and even older form, and we're happy to fall back on it and let people talk the way they normally talk, and screw the so-called rules that alienate our fans. Thanks, Lil. Okay. I love Mark Laidlaw so much. We're Project gonna listen Lil to that again. Is our code name for an internal push to make our comments more accessible to the whole Valve community. It was pointed out to us in mail from a fan that in some of our previous commentary, the designers referred unfailingly to the gamer as a he. Although in natural speech, most of us normally tend to say they and their rather than he and his, some stuffy, overactive minion of the grammar police went through and revised all those usages to make them conform to an oppressive gender-biased rule. However, research shows that they and there is a perfectly acceptable and even older form, and we're happy to fall back on it and let people talk the way they normally talk, and screw the so-called rules that alienate our fans. Thanks, Lil. 
You're welcome. It was me. He's talking about it's not me. Uh, it's not actually me. Don't, I'm not going to take credit for that. Oh, I love Mark so much. We're going to have him on letting off steam one day. One day. One day. To maintain a constant testing cycle, I simulate daylight at all hours and add adrenal vapor to your oxygen supply. So you may be confused about the passage of time. The point is... Yesterday, yesterday was, was your birthday. birthday. I thought you'd want to know. Does the birthday even matter if I'm technically a thousand years old? No. You're the antithesis of liking grammar, Tyler. Shut the fuck up. You know how I'm going to live forever, but you're going to be dead in 60 years. Well, I've been working on that line gave me my very first well, existential crisis. Medical procedure. Well, technically, it's a medical experiment. What's important is it's a present. Is this in preparation for the Half-Life Alex DevCon? Yes. That jumpsuit you're wearing looks stupid. That's not me talking. It's right here in your file. On other people it looks fine. But right here a scientist has noted that on you it looks stupid. Well, what does a neck-bearded old engineer know about fashion? She has a doctorate in oh, fashion wait. from France! Still, what does she know? Oh wait, it says she has a medical degree. In, in fashion, fashion from, from France. France. Dev commentary, more like dev commentary. Caught him. Oh yeah, the GLaDOS lines are amazing. The, 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 the humor written specifically for GLaDOS is goddamn brilliant, but that's not the fucking point. Going through the list of test subjects in cryogenic storage, I managed to find two with your last name. A man and a woman. And a woman. So that's interesting. It's a small world. Come portal. Come portal. That's just that's just uh that's just an orifice. That's just an orifice that's that's been cummed in. I've been playing Doom Eternal, by the way. Fun game. With vacuum tube, such a big part of. <gasps> Edo. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I forgot that Ito worked on this game. He took a break from Counter Strike for like a day. With the vacuum tube such a big part of Portal 2, we designed the new elevators to work within them. We liked the idea that this made the player feel about as important to Aperture as the cargo moving through the tube. Mm. And it also gave us plenty of opportunities to show how the system could go wrong, such as when the tubes get blocked or when cargo rains down on the elevator. The videos began as attempts to visualize some of Gladys' dialogue, but they evolved into a means of relaying information about the larger world of Aperture. It seemed very likely to us that Aperture would boast to the test subjects about the devices they were testing and show them the clever ideas they had put into the products. The videos also served as a reward for completing the test chambers and yeah. a way to make the elevators visually different from one another to prevent repetition. Who's Ito? Ito Magal is a longtime Counter Strike Global Offensive team member whom uh, the Balkan view, the Balkan player models are based off of. Uh. And also, I met him. He was one of the few people I got to interview when I was at Valve, and he's like one of my favorite people at Valve. Not that we really interact and really haven't much at all, but I don't know. He's just like, that man is a hunk. That man is a very attractive man.
Then they only add so many loading screens because of consoles? Yes. I always felt bad about shooting portal turrets with lasers as well, but I also really liked it. Portal 2 was developed with consoles in mind first and foremost, which was super unlike Valve. Uh, you know, it's, it's just what happened. Fuck! The fact that Sony got Gabe to announce Portal 2 officially at their press conference was a huge deal. Ratman sounded like Mr. Bean. Well, I mean, Ratman is just Mark Laidlaw. Well, I guess there's the Steam controller. Yeah, and the old PS3 Steam integration was really weird. Yeah, it only ever supported one fucking game. My testicles! Nobel Prize winners. It doesn't say what the prize was for. Well, I know it wasn't for being immune to neurotoxin. Your testicles are in the game? Yeah. We all have ball readjustments sometimes. I wonder why Valve doesn't give Tyler game information. Uh. Boink. You're supposed to be more professional, call him your companion spheres. Why turret laser doesn't go through glass? What? Because they can't shoot through glass. Why would they do that if, if, like, it would be bad visual representation of game mechanics? Ah! Yoink. Uh, this was always hard. So then the best thing to do would be through a portal. Oh, but you can't do through a portal because you got to use the portal to... I don't remember how to do this. <laughs> It'd be like, yoink. And then over there. I 
feel awful about that surprise. Tell you what, let's give your parents a call right now. Do you have the golden potato? No, I don't. The birth parents who are trying to reach do not love you. Please hang up. Oh, that's sad. But impressive. Maybe they worked at the phone company. It's impressive that a thousand years later that fucking answering machine's still online. I told my way onto the old Nana Bob group, rebuilding the show. They are really I know, Jerry. No, I'm on a break, mate. I'm on a break. Ah! Just hang in there for five more. What, Jerry? You can't fire me for that. Yes, Jerry. Or maybe your prejudiced work site should have accommodated a Nana Bob of my size. Thanks for the hate crime, Jer. See you in court, mate. Anyway, look, just hang in there for, for five more chambers. Hmm, Tyler, I don't think it's a real answering machine, maybe, perhaps. Yeah. Well, you know the old formula. Comedy equals tragedy plus time. And you have been asleep for a while. So I guess it's actually pretty funny when you do the math. Oh, duh. Do I, yeah, how many of these do I need? Just two, right? I don't remember. Math checks out. Shit, math does check out. See you in cold, mate. Do it again. Yep. Yoink. Boink. Boink. This is the puzzle that took you the longest to complete, really. Getting some stutters today. Did you see Matt Wood's tweets on, on Valve's Portal 2 level design strategy? I have not. Is Ellen McLean in any of the dev commentary? I think so. And I came up with a solution that I honestly think works out best for one of both of us. Oh, for one of both? Good. Your mom didn't like GLaDOS. Regulations require me to warn you that this next test chamber is, is looking pretty good. That's All right. I'm going to end it here for tonight. I'm getting really tired. Um, love you guys. Peace and hair grease. I'll talk to you all later. I hope I see you tomorrow. Bye bye.